Welcome to the tutorial, Managing a Network with a 3D Scene Setup. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your network view if you're organizing elements in 3D space. So right now in the perspective view, I have the ceiling from the dojo along with the background, and they're perpendicular to each other, and the ceiling is intersecting with the blue sky background. So originally the blue sky background was in the background group, but I moved it into the 3D dojo group for the sake of this example. And let me just rotate the view a little bit so you can see what that looks like. So let's enter our 3D dojo group. And inside you can see that it's only the ceiling and the sky that are enabled. So I'm going to reveal the layer properties view here and then click on the composite so that we see them come up here on the side. So this is for composite three. So by default, your composites are set to um, as bitmap for their output and 3D flat for the input ordering. So the 3D flat is actually the best one to have your composite set to. Um, both 3D and 3D flat render exactly the same way. They organize your images as if they're in 3D and render them in the correct perspective. Um, the difference is that with 3D, it doesn't flatten the image. Um, however, you only really need to use 3D when you're doing some pretty complicated setups, um, which we aren't in this case, so we're just going to leave that for now and keep our composite as 3D flat. However, if you change your input ordering to 2D, you can't see it here in the perspective view, but let me go to the camera view. I'll go back and forth. Um, when I was with 3D flat, you didn't see that black line. And as soon as I clicked 2D, you now see it. So what's going on here is that when these images are taken to be in 3D, we see the intersection because the software is recognizing that these two planes intersect in space. However, when they're shown in 2D, they're shown in the correct perspective, just as they are with 3D, but these are two separate objects that do not intersect. Hence why you see the full contour outline of the ceiling um, it's shown as an object that's now in front of the sky. So I'm going to change that back to 3D flat. And then I'm going to go back to the top view. So the thing with having multiple composites, let's make this full screen actually, is that when something is composited as flat, so let me actually flatten this one as well. What's happening is that this becomes like its own flattened layer. And this is like its own flattened layer. And they can be either in front or behind each other, but they can't intersect with each other's elements um, unless some of these elements have been moved along the z-axis. That's the only way that you might see something from this group um, happen to intersect with something from this group. But in general, there's less flexibility. So the best way actually when you have multiple composites um, coming into a final composite is to put them as pass-through. So let's go back into the 3D Dojo uh, group. And I'll bring up the layer properties again. And so even though pass-through is an output option and 3D flat is an input option, the moment you put pass-through, you negate everything that's going on in the composite. So it's like just taking a, a twist tie and putting it around a bunch of cables. It's keeping the cables together, but it's really not doing anything. And in some ways, this is actually really good because then you still have flexibility with all the elements in your composite. And in the end, as long as the final composite is not passed through, which it never should be, so if we go back to the top view, so this one is by default bitmap 3D flat, which we have here, then everything will be composited together at the end. And so all the calculations for all the rotations and movements and ordering and all of that will happen at the end as it should. Um, the only drawback to leaving these as pass through so this is already passed, and we know that by the shape that it takes on, it's no longer a rectangle, but more like um, a quadrilateral. So if we keep the background as passed through, the dojo is also passed through. If we do that to these two composites as well,
then the only drawback, as I was saying, is that it takes a little bit more time for you, the software to process what's going on because it's taking all these calculations into account. If this was just a flat image, it wouldn't have to take into account the what looks like maybe you know 10 or 12 cables um, coming out of here with all their separate positions for all these different layers and everything that's going on in those elements. But it's still, as I mentioned before, the recommended setup. So that's it for the tutorial, managing a network with a 3D scene setup. And it's also the last video in the true 3D space video tutorial series.